Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Just got back from vacation, hope everyone is doing well. Um, I just got back from the UK, we went to London and the Cotswolds and Scotland and tried to find the Loch Ness Monster, which we did not find, and then spent some time in Isle of Skye. I have a little bit of a cold, so my voice is going to uh, sound a little weird. Uh, but I got to see firsthand the really, really narrow roads in the British countryside, which I think is similar all across Europe. And I can see, again, the concerns about the width of the Aptera. Now, we did drive a full-size van. Um, it was like a Ford Transit uh, throughout that area. And that's a pretty wide vehicle. And it was definitely harder, but uh, wasn't. we were able to make it through all the roads. So I think with some... Um, work uh, you can definitely drive the aptera in most of those roads and it shouldn't be a problem uh, even at its current width but yeah it, it's definitely going to be a challenge especially on these really narrow country roads that they have there where basically you have to go off the road to let oncoming traffic uh, pass in many instances okay so coming back i want to look at this post from pin and farina uh, several days ago and they basically confirm that Aptera did some wind tunnel testing at their wind tunnel facility. You guys remember that two months ago, Jason Hill posted these pictures on his uh, LinkedIn page, this one and this one. And some people were wondering if these were Photoshopped and if this didn't really happen. Well, now we have confirmation from Pin and Farina that it did happen. And uh, it's... This is what they say, we're always excited to take part in development of innovative vehicles, especially when they share such a strong link with our wind tunnels history. Um, so what strong link with our wind tunnels history are they talking about? Well, this is uh, a press release from last year. They celebrated the 50 years of the 50 year anniversary of their wind tunnel. So the wind tunnel was built in 1972. Um, it was the Italy's first full size wind tunnel and it was only one of seven in the world at that time and if you go back um to the last page here okay right here it says right here at its conclusion in 1967 professor alberto morelli of turin Politecnico was entrusted with the task of designing an automotive wind tunnel for aerodynamic testing on full scale cars in 1970 pininfarina Pin Pin took the final decision to build the wind tunnel Okay, so if, if this name does not ring a bell, uh, we made a video uh, several months ago, maybe a year or more ago, where we talked about the Morelli shape. The Morelli shape is this shape right here, which looks very familiar to all of us. It's basically the shape of the Aptera. And Professor Morelli was doing aerodynamic work on how shapes near the ground have to be a little bit different uh, than the traditional teardrop shape that is thought to be the most aerodynamic in the that's the most aerodynamic shape in the air but its proximity to the ground forces you to have a different shape and it's called the Morelli shape and that is the shape of the Aptera so that is what they're referencing um, in here when they share such a strong link with our wind tunnels history so this wind tunnel was um, designed by Morelli and you can say in many respects the Aptera was also designed by Alberto Morelli. He, this is a vehicle actually that was built by Pin and Farina. It was in 1960 called the Concept X. And you'll see that they were very interested in aerodynamics from the very start of the company. And this is a trike design. So three wheels, one in the front, two in the back. Now this is a little bit less stable than the reverse trike that the Aptera is, but is aerodynamically a little easier to deal with because you don't have to deal with the wheel pants or the wheel covers that the Aptera does. But you can see here in the shape, this was also, um, you see in here that they talk about Alberto Morelli as well. And if what's another interesting thing is if you scroll down to the bottom of this article, you see this vehicle right here is in the 1970s. They developed this thing called a CNR PF. It was a four-seater passenger car at a drag coefficient of 0.172, which the Aptera is thought to have a, is predicted to have a seat coefficient of drag of 0 0.13. 0 0.17 isn't bad, and this is a, uh, a um, the shape that they came up with. Now, I think 
they needed to have this open to cool the uh, internal combustion engines that they had at that time. You could obviously close this up. That would improve aerodynamic drag quite a bit. And you could enclose the, um, the rear wheels and cover them up completely because they don't need to turn. And if you guys remember from our video of the Aero Civic, there are these uh, covers for the front wheels that you, that you can put them on rollers and have them flare out in low speed maneuvers where you turn the wheel more. And I think if you did all those things, you could probably get this very close to uh, the current Aptera shape and have um, space for five passengers and, and cargo. So it's possible that the, the, the eventual four-wheel, uh, four five-passenger Aptera may look something similar to this. Uh, so pretty interesting. Anyways, the rest of this is... Um, so they talk about solar electric vehicle manufacturer Aptera Motors enters the validation phase for its aerodynamic shape last month at Pininfarina's world famous wind tunnel. This first step in validation underscores Aptera's commitment to progress, continual innovation, the pursuit of the revolutionary mobility solutions at the forefront of ultra efficient transportation. This is what I wanted to highlight right here. Aptera has designed the most aerodynamic vehicle possible. So there is some confirmation from Pininfarina that they do believe that Aptera has designed a very efficient, very aerodynamic vehicle. And they said now Pininfarina with its rich heritage and exceptional aerodynamic prowess will be working closely with Aptera to validate the unique shape of its cutting edge solar electric vehicle. So that, and then you see a couple of pictures here. You see the smoke here looks very, this is a great looking picture. I think this picture looks awesome. And uh, a couple of things to notice here. You see the rollers from the front wheels. Now, when I talked to Jason, they said they had some, they had a hard time kind of figuring out the rollers for the center rear wheel because this is designed for four wheeled vehicles. But it looks like indeed they did figure out a way to put the rollers on the third wheel so they, they, um, they can get uh, accurate uh, measurements because you do need to spin up the wheels to get an accurate measurement. Um, and then here it is again. Here it's not on the rollers. They have it off the rollers. And then here's the uh, pin and farina team working on it. And I think this is, you see it's on the rollers now. And it looks like they maybe they're figuring out, this is maybe where they figured out how to make the third wheel work. But yeah, I especially love this picture. This picture looks great. Would make a great, uh, yeah, it would make a great wallpaper or something like that. It, it looks it looks pretty cool. If you look here, someone talks about, you know, saying, oh, you know, you definitely need to test it in yaw. Um, so yaw, remember, is pitching around the rotation around the vertical axis. So if the wind comes in kind of sideways on here, that's going to affect it because there is a lot, a lot of surface area on, on the wheel covers. And so that may uh, influence the um, aerodynamics of it. So I'm sure that Pininfarina is well aware of that, and as as is Aptera. I know when I talked to Jason, he says that they did test uh, some sideways as well, and so um, they are going to they are going to do a full testing. I think uh, Aptera has said that they are not going to release the numbers from this test. They just wanted to validate their computerized fluid dynamics results, and I believe that it it did match up fairly well with that, and so they will. When they get the uh, Delta bodies made um, at CPC and they have a vehicle, their plan is to go back to Pininfarina and run the full real world test on the Delta vehicle or the launch edition vehicle with that shape because there are subtle differences between this Gamma vehicle and the Delta vehicle. And then they will release the numbers at that time, but they will not be releasing the numbers from this test of the Gamma because they do not coincide with the... Uh, uh, launch edition. Now, I don't know if they n found any problems or anything with this uh, with this testing. Um, I don't think that there were any major problems, but they found minor problems. I don't know how much wiggle room they have to adjust uh, the shape of these things. I think the major shape can't be changed much. The dies have already been milled, um, and perhaps the dies for the for the uh, wheel covers and such are a little bit different. Maybe they can be tweaked a little bit. Little things like the mirror and stuff that that can probably also be tweaked but i think much of it cannot be um changed much maybe the little struts that uh attach to the front wheel covers and and attach the front wheels and suspension maybe those can be modified a little bit 
but I think the general shape is pretty much set. Okay, so uh, tell me what you guys think about this news and uh, let me know if you think this picture looks pretty cool too. All right, thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.